Hello, Franklin families, and welcome to our second Virtual Pan Academy. In this edition, we'll be discussing promotion criteria. I truly believe it is very important for students and families to be familiar with this concept since all our students want to be promoted at the end of the year, right? So um, please pay special attention to this presentation and don't hesitate if you have any questions to email me. Uh, let me start by saying that everything related to promotion criteria can be found in policy 6000.1. So our students need to meet certain attendance requirements, but also uh, curriculum and instructional requirements. Today, we'll be focusing on this second um, group of requirements. I'm gonna ask you to be patient because um, I'm gonna go over every single grade, starting from kindergarten all the way up to eighth grade. So some slides will really not apply to you. Before I start with K, uh, kindergarten through fifth grade promotion criteria, I want to ensure that you are familiar with some concepts. First, our journeys and go math are the curriculum um, tools that we use for ELA, language arts, and mathematics, right? The BAS or benchmark assessment system, it's um, a tool that helps us identify each student reading level uh, during a one-on-one -on -one student teacher assessment. I will I will be discussing this tool more in depth because it is very important to be familiar with this one. ELL or ESOL students are those students who have, who are learning English as a second language, English language learners. And ESC and IEP, um, I'm sure that you are familiar with this concept. Um, exceptional student education is, um, its purpose is helping each child with a disability progress in the school and prepare for life after the school. So, you know, um, Journeys and Go Math are from Houghton Mifflin Hancock or HMH. They are the Florida Journeys and then Go Math. I'll be talking about these two resources uh, through my presentation. The Benchmark Assessment System is the most reliable resource that helps us identify each child's instructional and reading level. Here you can see how our students need to meet certain levels every year um, in order to be considered on level, uh, readers on level, right? Okay, so in a nutshell, what needs to happen to our students at the end of the year in order to be promoted. As you can see here in kindergarten, our students' BAS score needs to be a little B or greater. For first grade, the BAS should be a level I. For second grade, the BAS score for a student in order to be promoted should be at least on level M. In third and fourth, third, fourth and fifth, it changes a little bit. Third grade is a very important year. It's what we call a mandatory retention year. Um, the first criteria will be scoring a level two or greater in the FSA or the Florida Standards Assessment Test for language arts. As you see, there is no math in this grade. Um, they don't consider math for retention or promotion. In grades four and five, students need to meet a level two or greater in FSA for language arts, but also for mathematics. So now I'm going to start grade by grade. In kindergarten, as I mentioned, our students need to be on a letter B on the benchmark assessment system in order to be promoted. But there is some good cost promotion criteria as well. If you see, letter B means that a student is reading at a 0 0.5, which means mid-year kindergarten level. That's what a student needs to accomplish in order to be promoted. But also, a student who hasn't met that criteria will be taking a test at the end of the year from the journeys. It's a um, test that focuses on phonemic awareness, phonics, and high frequency words. And if the student scores more than 70, the student will be promoted. Also, if the student recognizes 48 out of 52 letter names and is able to distinguish 20 out of 26 letters and sounds, 
and 15 out of 20 concepts of print that can be used for a student to be promoted. Also, if a student has been retained, previously retained in kindergarten, the student um, can be promoted. Or if a student is a ELL or ESOL student that has been less than two years in the country. If a student has an IEP, the student can also be promoted. For first grade, the first criteria that we use, like I mentioned, is the BAS. Student needs to be on a letter I or 1.8 in order to be promoted. Also, if the student hasn't met this criteria, we'll take a test, we'll have the student taking a test on the HMH journeys and needs to score a 70 or above. Also, if the student has been previously retained, we can go ahead and promote the student. Again, if a student is an ESOL student with less than two years, or if a student has an IEP or is an ESE student, we can go ahead and promote that student. For second grade, very similar. If the student is a level M or above on the BAS, the student will be promoted. If the student is less than an M, we'll go ahead and give, provide the student with a test from the HMH journeys, is the end of year test. Student needs to score level 70 or above. Again, if the student has been retained before, we can go ahead and promote the student. Again, the ESOL or ELL uh, component, less than two years in the country, or a student, a student with an IEP can also be promoted. Well, third grade is a little different. Third grade is what we call a mandatory retention year. The criteria is very black and white. Students need to score a level two or above in FSA, English Language Arts. Um, there are some good cause promotion criteria that can be also used. Students who don't pass the FSA with a two or above will be taking at the end of the year um, a test. It's usually called the SAT 10. Um, if a student still doesn't pass that test, we'll go ahead and use the portfolio. This is an assessment that students are completing through the year in the classroom. Then we have Summer Academy. Those students who still have not passed will go to summer school and take a test at the end of Summer Academy. And the following year in September, what we call the mid-year assessment, is another test that if a student pass with a 44 or, or above, 44%, can also be promoted. Um, if a student has been retained previously, um, in the previous year, kinder, first or second grade, it's also a good cause for a student to be promoted. Again, the ESOL or ELL, um, less than two years in the country and an ESE student who has already been uh, retained in the school. For fourth grade, we're gonna focus on FSA, ELA, and math. Students need to pass with at least a level two in both in order to be promoted. In fourth grade, we're back to the BAS. Students can be promoted if they score a level S or above in the BAS. If students still need more tests in order to be promoted, we'll be using the HMH, the HMH um, reading and math for journeys, and from journeys and from Go Math as well. Um, the students need to pass with a 60 in math or a 70 in ELA. Also, you can see here students who have been retained previously, the ESOL promotion which is students who have in the country for less than two years, but also students who have been previously retained, ESC students who have been previously retained can also be promoted. Fifth grade, it works very, very similar. Score level two or above in ELA and math. If students don't meet that criteria, we can go ahead and check the BAS. Students need to be in a letter V. Um, or above for reading. Again, we can use the journeys 
and the goal math end of year testing to promote our students. Students who have been retained previously in grades um, kinder through fourth can also be promoted. English language are um, ESOL students, I'm sorry, ESOL students or ELL students with less than two years can be promoted. And also ESC students who have been retained, previously retained. I hope this helps our families, kinder to fifth grade, to understand the promotion criteria. We're going to go ahead and explain middle school. Middle school promotion is very different. We are going to discuss promotion from grades to grades, from six to seven and seven to eight. And then we're going to discuss promotion after eighth grade. Students in order to be promoted from sixth grade to seventh and seventh grade to eighth must pass a minimum of four subjects, two of which must be one of the uh, two of the core classes so english mathematics science or social studies meaning that students need to pass at least two core classes to be promoted we'll be um, discussing later what is considered passing a passing grade for full year will be computed based upon the student earning four points i will give later some examples students who fail any of the four core courses, so one or two core courses, will be given the opportunity to meet the requirements of the courses through a school day or extended learning opportunities. Now, in order to be promoted uh, to ninth grade, meaning graduating middle school, students need three middle school or higher year-long courses in English, three in math, three in science, and three in social studies. Um, for social studies, it is mandatory that students take a civics class, and that civics class has an EOC, an end of year exam at the end of the year, and that EOC will count as 30% of the student civics grade. Also, it is mandatory one course in career and education planning to be completed through uh, either 7th or 8th grade. At Franklin Academy, our students complete this course in 8th grade. So, as a summary, um, our students in, during middle school, grades 6, 7, and 8, need to be completing three different courses in language arts, three in math, three in science, and three in social studies, meaning a total of 12 core classes during those three years. Also, a seventh grade civics class that has an EOC at the end of the year and a career education class that our students take in eighth grade. So how do you pass a course? You need four points for a student to pass a course. Every quarter, students are earning points if a student scores an A, scores four points, a B is worth three points, a C, two points, a D is still one point, and of course you don't get any points if you score an F. I wrote down a couple of examples down there. If you see students with an A, B, B, C, for example, will score 12 points, which is passing. Remember, passing is four points. As you see in my fourth example, student with straight Ds will be earning four points, which is still passing. Okay, you can look at the different examples that I show there. Again, it's a four point passing rate. Okay. Well, this is everything about promotion criteria. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. and I hope that you uh, really found this presentation very useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at delgado.sergio at franklin-academy.org or um, contact our, our school, and I will be very happy to talk to you. It's been a pleasure to present for you all, and I'm looking forward to see our students um, succeed this year. Thank you all. The Littlest Pumpkin by R. A. Herman. It was Halloween and there were 18 pumpkins left at Bartlett's farm stand.
The pumpkins looked their very best because they all wanted to be taken home and made into jolly jack-o'-lanterns. The littlest pumpkin had the biggest dreams of all. She saw herself shining in the dark with ghosts and monsters and witches and fairies gathered around her singing a Halloween song. And today was the day when all her dreams were going to come true. Maggie dropped by the stand on her way to school just as it was opening. I want the biggest pumpkin you have for my class party, she said, looking at the pumpkins on display. She didn't even glance at the littlest pumpkin. The pumpkin Maggie chose was so big, Mr. Bartlett had to help her put it in her mother's car. Then the twins arrived. Jess wanted the roundest, fattest pumpkin. Jen wanted the tallest, skinniest pumpkin. They both knew exactly what they wanted their jack-o'-lanterns to look like. Later that morning, Mrs. Garland's class came to the farm stand to buy apples and pumpkins for their Halloween party. The littlest pumpkin was very excited when she saw all the children. Now certainly I will be chosen by someone and made into a jack-o'-lantern, she thought. But no one chose the littlest pumpkin. All day long, people came to the farm stand to buy pumpkins. Mr. Potter ran in to choose a pumpkin for his daughter, Kate. Poor Kate was home with the flu, but she had drawn pictures for her dad so he could see exactly what kind of pumpkin she wanted. Mr. Potter looked at every single pumpkin until he found the right one. The sun began to set and only four pumpkins were left at the farm stand. One pumpkin had a bruise on its back. One pumpkin was lumpy and bumpy. One pumpkin didn't have a stem. And the last pumpkin was the littlest pumpkin. Sad face. <laughs> the littlest pumpkin still had big dreams. She would be a beautiful jack-o'-lantern at a Halloween party. She would shine in the dark with ghosts, monsters, witches, and fairies gathered around her singing a Halloween song. But while the littlest pumpkin was dreaming, Gabe and Mona arrived. They ran up to the four remaining pumpkins. Gabe grabbed the stemless one. Perfect, he said. My jack-o'-lantern is going to wear this hat. Mona picked up the littlest pumpkin. Oh, how cute, she said. The littlest pumpkin was so happy. All her dreams were going to come true. But it's too small for me to carve into a jack-o'-lantern, said Mona, putting it down. Then she picked up the lumpy, bumpy one instead. Now this one is perfect. Soon it was dark and the stars began to sparkle in the sky. Mr. Bartlett was cleaning up. Oh, please don't close yet, thought the littlest pumpkin. I must be a jack-o'-lantern for Halloween. Suddenly, Mr. Bartlett heard someone calling his name. Mr. Bartlett, Mr. Bartlett, it was Sam. Please wait, said Sam. I need a pumpkin for my party tonight. Mr. Bartlett picked up the bruised pumpkin and told Sam that if he turned it around, it would make a very nice jack-o'-lantern. Sam agreed, and with that, Mr. Bartlett closed the farm stand. So there, in the dark, on Halloween night, sat the littlest pumpkin. She was all alone, or so she thought. For just when the littlest pumpkin was sure she was going to spend Halloween night all alone in the empty farm stand, mice started scurrying around her. They were decorating everything, wearing tiny costumes and carrying all sorts of Halloween goodies. And before the littlest pumpkin knew what was happening, she found herself in the middle of a Halloween party. Mice dressed in costumes were bobbing for cranberries, playing pin the tail on the squirrel, and eating cheese and crumbs. Then the best thing of all happened. 
The littlest pumpkin was turned into a jack-o'-lantern. She was shining in the dark with ghosts, monsters, witches, and fairies gathered all around her singing a Halloween song. All her big dreams had come true on Halloween night. The end.